Never before has a new format hooked me as quickly as 4x5 did. Okay. After a brief stint with an old Crown Graphic, the Intrepid and my time spent working with it for this review has been my entry into the world of large format. A total of five different photography trips with 15 sheets of film exposed. And in the end, one image that I absolutely love. This country's on One massive image that made the entire process and expense absolutely worth it. So this review has been a long time in the making. Uh, Intrepid originally sent me their new 4x5 MK4 back in January, the start of this year, and I started the review in the winter and then COVID happened and I ended up in the UK for a number of months. And it's only been as of recently since I've been back that I've got back out with this camera for a number of shoots and got to know it a little better. After using this camera now for a few different shoots, two things became quickly apparent. And the first one is that I'm absolutely in love with this format. And the second is that I don't think I ever want to do a large format camera view again. And I'll explain why. Found an image. This is perfect. I'm going to do a little staging here. A little symmetry. I like the composition. This could be good. It could also just be really boring. That's it. So I was actually eyeballing the Intrepid for quite a while as they really are kind of the most affordable way to enter this world. And for those of you who aren't familiar, these cameras are built in the UK and you can pick them up new for 280 pounds, I believe, which is around 350 US dollars. And obviously that doesn't come with a lens, but you can also pick lenses up for pretty cheap. And in the world of four x five, nothing really comes close to that price, uh, except for say like an older Crown or Speed Graphic, which are great cameras, but there's always gonna be obviously questions about usability and reliability with those. The lens that I decided to pick up for my camera is a Fujinon 135mm 5.6, which is a really well-reviewed lens that's equivalent to around 40mm in the 135 format. This lens only cost me 150 US dollars with the lens board. So I already had some film holders from when I had my crown graphic, but regardless, it's pretty safe to say that all in, you could probably have a complete setup put together for under $600 US, which is pretty damn good in my opinion. Actually, so I think we're going to start, I'm going to start with a close-up shot here. Do I go landscape or portrait? Kind of like, like in portrait. And that sky by the time we shoot is probably going to be a little more mellow, which will be nice. Cool to get some color up there. Tell you what, everything looks cooler through the back of this camera. I think with this one, I'm gonna shoot a little shallower. I'm gonna go F8. Try and throw uh, the rest of the scene out of focus a little bit. The front end of this car is what's really nice. Already changing. I'm gonna go half a second, give it a little extra. I am rating this at 64. This is Ektar 100. So if I had a little bit of critique for this camera, obviously I'm still really new to the 4x5 world. I've only worked with the Crown Graphic before this, but I find myself really wanting kind of some hard stops for some of the movements uh, to zero them out, to lock in place. Because right now for 
say the rise and the fall and some of the tilts and stuff like that. You kind of just have to eyeball it to zero them out and make sure that everything's aligned, which really isn't that big of a deal. But I guess with me being so new to this format, I find that I'm rushing things and my head's kind of all over the place trying to make sure I'm covering all my bases that uh, there's been a couple times now where I've noticed some of the movements are out just a little bit um, from setup. So some hard stops uh, to know when they're zeroed out would be a really, really nice feature. Obviously one of the huge draws for me coming to 4x5 is the size of the negative, but another huge advantage of working with these cameras is just the ability to control depth and perspective and stuff like that. And with the Intrepid, I probably won't ever use much more than just a little bit of rise and fall and some tilt. But the cool thing with these cameras is, you know, with them being so affordable, you would think that they'd be limited in what they can do, but they're still very fully featured when it comes to the movements and what they're capable of doing. Okay, so we've got this pretty cool scene behind me. Got here just a little late trying to kind of time the ambient light with this uh, light in the old phone box here. Uh, so we're gonna make two exposures and fingers crossed it's a really cool scene. So I'm hoping that I, uh, that I nail the exposures here. Let's see what happens. This was the last image that I shot with this camera for this review. And as I waited to get my film back from developing, I could only cross my fingers and hope that everything came together. And when I scanned this image and saw it on screen for the first time, it just brought me this sense of satisfaction uh, that I haven't really felt at that level in a long time with my photography. Back to my point about never wanting to do a large format camera review again. And obviously whenever I do these videos, I always wanna create some images in them that I feel proud of, but there's a pressure that comes with that. And really that couldn't be any more opposite to how working with a system like this should feel just patient, slow and focused. There's something about knowing that the image you're about to create has been thought out to the best of your ability. And even if it doesn't turn out as well as you'd hoped, you still know that you're gonna learn a ton in the process. Honestly, don't really have high hopes for that one. I'm waiting for the moment where I like try and take a photo without film in the back. I'm gonna shoot this one at F8 again. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. I really don't wanna shoot that again and waste a piece of film, so I'm just gonna cross my fingers and hope that turns out. <laughs> Looks a little off, but I hope it doesn't suck. Probability is high. That's a wrap. So overall, I gotta say, I've been really happy with this camera, and I think it's awesome that there's companies like Intrepid out there building new cameras for film photographers at such an affordable price. And obviously, if you wanna get into the world of 4x5, there's all sorts of different options and different cameras you can choose from. Uh, but I gotta say, it's pretty damn exciting that you can pick up a brand new kit for under $600 US.